Before we begin Unit 11, here is the answer to the Unit 10 question. The best answer is choice D. Ecology is the science that studies how organisms interact with one another and the non-living environment of matter and energy. Energy is an abiotic factor that can be transferred throughout an ecosystem as organisms interact with one another and their environments, and elements and compounds continuously move through the air, water, soil, rock, and living organisms or ecosystems in what are referred to as biogeochemical cycles. However, it is estimated that every time one organism feeds on another, nearly 90% of available energy is lost to the environment in each step of a trophic level. Unit 11, Earth's Life Insurance Policy. We often refer to a person's wealth as their economic capital. In our society, the more financially secure a person becomes, the more likely it is that they will be able to successfully overcome an unexpected adversity, such as loss of property due to a storm, an unexpected hospital stay, or losing their job. Although the Earth does not have a bank account, it does have its own form of wealth known as natural capital. Natural capital refers to the resources and services that keep ecosystems in balance and life in existence. Probably the most important aspect of natural capital is biodiversity. It's like an insurance policy for life on Earth. Generally speaking, biodiversity refers to the variety and abundance of species. Like teachers in a well-run school, each species has its own niche or role in their ecosystem. Many of the roles overlap as more than one species is usually capable of providing the ecosystem with certain traits and characteristics upon which the others depend. As long as an abundance of biodiversity exists, should one species die off or leave the ecosystem, another will often step up and fill the vacant role. There is one exception. Keystone species provide very specific traits and characteristics vital for the survival of their ecosystems. Should the keystone species be removed, the entire ecosystem will be thrown into disorder and most likely be lost. Over time, all species eventually become extinct. The naturally occurring low rate of extinction is referred to as background extinction. Fortunately, Earth has its own insurance plan in the form of biodiversity that has always provided a means for life to go on. This natural capital also allows time for new species to evolve to fill vacant roles. In addition to background extinction, every so often a catastrophic natural event, such as a meteor collision or abrupt climate change, has resulted in mass extinctions. During Earth's history, there have been five known occurrences in which a high percentage of the planet's species have become extinct in a short period of time. Fortunately, and thanks to biodiversity, surviving species were able to fill roles in existing ecosystems, allowing time for new species and different ecosystems to evolve. Unfortunately, the Earth's natural capital is steadily and quickly being degraded by human activity. In short, our species is stepping on the gas pedal and accelerating us straight toward another mass extinction, but at the same time, canceling the Earth's life insurance policy. You may have played a game where the objective is to take one piece of neatly stacked blocks out of the original structure without causing the tower to fall. With time, the tower becomes less stable and eventually, one player takes out a block that causes the whole system to fall apart. Due to human activity, species are going extinct and entire ecosystems are being lost at an alarming rate. As species are removed one by one, like the game, our ecosystems are becoming less and less stable. Eventually, there will not be enough species to fill the niches or roles necessary, and entire ecosystems will fall. Whenever this happens, our future generations will be the losers. If this process continues, the entire biosphere may be in danger, and it will be the first time that a single species has ever caused a mass extinction on the planet. So far, we have focused specifically on species diversity. However, there are three other forms of diversity that enhance Earth's natural capital. It was mentioned in previous units that energy flows and matter cycles through ecosystems. The fact that these processes or functions can occur in many different ways also increases the Earth's natural capital. This is known as functional diversity. If one function is disrupted, energy flow or nutrient cycling will often find a different manner in which to interact with the living systems of the planet. In fact, if it wasn't for functional diversity, our fossil fuels and land development practices would have so disrupted the one-way energy flow and nutrient cycling processes that our biosphere would have already collapsed. 
Genetic diversity is another form of insurance that our Earth has established by the wide variety of genetic material in species populations. Genetic diversity has allowed species to adapt and survive with changing environmental conditions. The greater the genetic variation, the more chances there are for mutations to occur that result in advantageous traits and for stabilizing adaptive evolution to occur. However, human activity is diminishing the size and variety of available gene pools and therefore reducing genetic diversity. Finally, the vast variety and number of Earth's terrestrial and aquatic ecosystems add to the planet's overall health and security. Entire ecosystems can be replaced by others more suited to changing environmental conditions. This is known as ecological diversity. Simply stated, the more ecosystems there are, the healthier will be the planet. However, at the rate they are currently being destroyed, there is virtually no chance that these ecosystems will have enough time to recover naturally. As you can see, the Earth has an outstanding insurance policy designed to protect the life that it supports. However, as human activities continue to adversely affect species, functional, genetic, and ecological diversity, eventually these systems will become so diminished that a disruption, natural or human-induced, may lead to a collapse of the entire biosphere. The steady decline of biodiversity is no game. Let's hope that our children will understand this and that today's leaders realize that playtime is over. Here is your question for Unit 11. Natural capital is to economic capital as... Choice A. The Earth's diversity is to a person's wealth. Choice B. A keystone species is to its ecosystem. Choice C. Species diversity is to functional diversity. Or choice D. Genetic diversity is to ecological diversity. The answer and explanation are provided at the beginning of Unit 12.